Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and Kirchhoff's current law are all concepts that I use in my day-to-day -day job as an electrical engineer. Now, I want to teach you these concepts without any extraneous information or irrelevant examples. So we're just going to try, we're trying to do this as efficiently as possible. So I have some notes that I want to go through. I have some example problems that I want to work for you. And then I also have some circuit simulations that I think are good demos for understanding these concepts. So that's pretty much what we're going to be going over in this video. Um, before we go any further, though, please go ahead and drop a like on the video for me. It helps my channel out immensely and subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date with any future videos. I post a lot on electrical engineering demo projects. I go over notes related to fundamental. Now that out of the way, let's just jump right into it. OK, so the first topic I want to cover here is Ohm's law. So Ohm's law deals with the relationship between voltage, current and resistance. The first thing we want to define here is resistance, which is a circuit element's ability to resist current, and that is measured in ohms. One note I have here is that ideal circuit elements that are not resistors have zero resistance. In real life, all circuit elements have some resistance, though, so keep that in mind. So there's a distinction between stuff we might draw on a whiteboard and then something that in, in the real world, like say an inductor, you might say that has zero uh, DC resistance, but in real life it does have some resistance. And we'll talk about more of that stuff later on. So it's just important to understand the concept of resistance. So it was just a circuit element's ability to resist current. Then Ohm's law states that the voltage drop across an element is proportional to the current flowing through that element. So then I have one equation just written two or three different ways here. So we have V equals IR, probably one of the most famous equations or most common equations you'll ever see in electrical engineering, which is V equals IR. V is voltage, I is current, R is resistance. And then I went ahead and written it two other ways here. Just so you have familiarity with playing around with the, the algebraic terms here, note that uh, I equals V over R is just a common way to write Ohm's law, and then V over I equals R. So basically, if you want to solve for one of these elements, you just have to know, you need to know how to rearrange the variables in order to kind of get what you want out of it. So the important part is be familiar with this, this equation here and just the different ways to rewrite it. And then we have a quick example that we want to go over. So let's say an electric iron draws two amps at 120 volts, find its resistance. So we know simply that we need to actually take advantage of what I just mentioned here is that we need to know how to rewrite V equals IR. And we know that V over I equals R. We have 120 volts divided by two amps equals 60 ohms. And so that's going to be its resistance right there. Then let's go ahead and jump on over to the circuit simulation I have, which I think demos Ohm's law. Okay, here we just have a really simple circuit where we have a 120 volt voltage source. This is actually the example we just saw for, but I want to show you here in the circuit demo application here. So we have 120 volts going across this 60 ohm resistor, and there we have the current being measured. And so you can clearly see that we have two amps of current that we're drawing that's passing through the resistor, which is measured at 60 ohms. And then I just have the equation written here. 120 volts divided by 60 ohms is 2 amps. So I have it rewritten differently. I have V over R equals I, but it gives you the same thing anyways. So just a very simple demo of how Ohm's law kind of works. And we'll dive into some more elaborate examples later on. Okay, so one topic in terms of Ohm's law that I want to cover is the idea of a short circuit. So a short circuit is when resistance approaches zero. So whenever resistance equals zero, we get the equation V over zero equals infinity, right? When you divide anything by zero, you get infinity. And this is infinite, in, infinite uh, amount of amps that you are drawing here, which in the real world, what I have here is due to physical limitations, we can't actually achieve infinite current. So this is usually a bad thing. Just keep in mind, short circuits are typically a bad thing and should be cause for alarm. So you want to avoid short circuits. The next thing I want to cover or next concept here is a concept of an open circuit, which is just when resistance approaches infinity. So when resistance is infinity, that means the current draw is basically zero amps. And let's go back to this demo. So what uh, an example of an open circuit would be is if I just deleted this wire right here, right? So these are no, they're open. It's not closed. There's no uh, closed path for the current to flow through. So you get zero current. You can see the electrons flowing through the circuit are not moving at all because there's no current and we have zero amps right there. If I put it back and we go back to two amps. So that's what 
an open circuit is. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be uh, these things called nodes, branches, and loops. And these are just terms that we use to define different parts or the different anatomical parts of a circuit. So we'll actually have an example that we'll look at below. But yeah, these are just the different ways, um, different different pieces of a, of a circuit, right? Much like, you know, anatomy of a, of a person or something. So the first term is branch. So a branch is any two terminal elements. So going down to our labeled diagram here, I have branches, any two terminal elements. So we have this voltage source. This is a little branch, right? So two has two terminals on it. So you would consider this part a branch right here. Another example is like this resistor. So we have this resistor has these two terminals. That resistor, this 5 ohm resistor is a branch. Next up is node. Node is the point of connection between two or more branches. So one example is where the 10 voltage source meets a resistor. So I have a little arrow pointing right here to this is an example of a node. And so are all these other red dots on this diagram right here is anywhere where two, uh, two, a point of connection between two or more branches. Like I said, that is a node. Next up is another term that you probably won't hear this very much in a classroom at all. This is a term I picked up from working uh, like in industry, right? This is a, a term you'll hear in industry a whole lot, which is something called a net. And a net is, uh, the way I would define a net is just a collection of nodes that share a common connection, right? And I'll say that again, a collection of nodes that share a common connection. So one example of a net that I have drawn here is all of these nodes down here are all connected to the same net. And I would call that a ground net. It's the negative terminal of our voltage source. This is typically where a ground uh, plane would go or just a ground connection would go. So I have dubbed this C net uh, ground, you could call it, right? So it's all of these together. They all connect to the same thing. And that's where they're called a ground net. Another example might be, say, a 3.3 volt net. Um, it's not pictured in this diagram at all, but say we had a single voltage source that was connected to a whole bunch of resistors or something then you could call that a 3.3 volt net or, or whatever volt net. Okay, so next up is a loop, which is any closed path in a circuit. For example, a resistor connected to both terminals of a voltage source. So here I have a loop drawn in this circuit. So it's this little closed area right here. We, we follow, we can kind of follow basically like in, in this uh, circuit example, this is a loop right here, right? So we have current flowing through here, through the resistor and back around. It almost even makes a loop. It's just, you know, a square, right? And so it's a closed circuit. It's, this is an example of a loop. Some other notes I want to make about this diagram here is that the 5 ohm resistor and 2 ohm resistor are in series with each other, which means they follow sequentially in the loop, meaning so like if you were to follow the current, the path, the current path flowing through here, you would see that we go through the 5 ohm resistor and then through the 2 ohm resistor and then we close it. Um, conversely or comparatively, we, uh, the two ohm resistor and the three ohm resistor are in parallel, which means that they are connected to the same two nodes. Meaning if you look at this node, this node B right here is shared between the two ohm resistor and three ohm resistor. And then this node C here is also shared between the two ohm and three ohm resistor. So they're connected to both, both of their ends are connected, So they are in parallel. And, uh, one quick note. So one note about parallel elements or parallel resistors in this case is that they have the same voltage drop across them. And we'll look at some examples later on that demo that. Um, but just know the voltage drop across resistors in parallel is the same. And then for the purposes of resistors in series, they carry the same current through them. And we'll talk about this stuff later when we demo some more examples. But that's just a good um, opportunity to, to show you some ways that uh, elements in a circuit can be kind of laid out and organized. Okay, so next up, we're going to be talking about Kirchhoff's laws. So there are two important laws that you need to be familiar with. And these laws are actually really handy tools that you can use in order to 
do some circuit analysis and understand uh, like what is the voltage drop across an element, how much current is flowing through an individual element in a circuit. So we're going to break down these laws and we're going to go in through some examples of them being put into use and how you can actually use them to analyze a circuit. So the first law we're going to take a look at is Kirchhoff's current law or KC KCL for short. This states that the algebraic sum of currents entering a node is zero. In other words, the sum of currents entering a node equals the sum of currents exiting the node. So I have this diagram right here. So we have a bunch of arrows where we have, say, I1 is going into this node, I4 is going into this node, I5 is going out of this node, I2 is going out of this node, and then I3 is going into this node. So algebraically, you can ascribe a, a directionality to either be positive or negative. For example, I have defined, um, like we'll say I1 and I4 could be, and I3 could all be uh, looked at as positive, and then I5 and I2 could be looked at as negative. And since the algebraic sum of currents entering a node is zero, then you can move I5 and I2 across the equal sign, and then you would basically come up with the algebraic term I1 plus I3 plus I4 equals I5 plus I2. Right. And this makes perfect sense because the sum of currents entering a node. So remember like I1, I3, I4, they're all entering the node is going to equal the sum of the currents exiting the node, which is going to be I2 and I5. So I hope that makes sense. We're going to talk about, we're going to go through an example in just a second. So if it doesn't, you'll see it in action soon. Okay. Next up, we're going to talk about Kirchhoff's voltage law or KVL for short, which states that the algebraic sum of all voltage around a closed path is zero. So here I have this example circuit. We have V1 as a voltage source. V2 is a voltage drop across a resistor. V3 is a voltage drop across a resistor. V4 is another voltage source. And then V5 is some other type of resistor, it looks like. So algebraically, what Kirchhoff's voltage law would be saying is that, um, and again, we have to ascribe directionality to these voltage drops. And we'll kind of get into this whenever we see an example circuit, and I can go into more depth about what it means. But if you just look at this little red arrow, this kind of gives you an idea of what we're talking about is we can say that voltage drops that are following along this red arrow are positive, meaning the, we're going from positive to negative here as well, which is the direction of this arrow. So um, if it's positive to negative and it's the same direction as this arrow, then it's ascribed a positive value algebraically. So here we have a positive V2 value or term, and that's because we go positive to negative is following the same direction as this arrow. So positive to negative, positive V2, positive to negative, positive V3. Oh, we have negative to positive right here. So that means we have a negative V4. We're going around the circuit again. We have positive to negative. Okay, so V5 should be positive. It is. And then we're going, oh, again, negative to positive. That means V1 should be negative. And then all of these summed should equal zero. And we'll go into an example if that's not very clear, but just kind of understand, like I said, there's some directionality to this. And then the algebra is actually incredibly simple once you figure out the directionality. So let's take a, go ahead and take a look at another circuit simulation I have for us, which kind of demos uh, KCL and then KVL as well. Okay, according to my notes, the left circuit is KCL, which is going to be, uh, one note on that is the current flowing into the node is equal to the current flowing out of the node, and then the two resistors are in parallel. So there's kind of a double example here. So like I said, the first thing to note is that the current flowing into the node, which is 240 milliamps, is equal to the sum of the currents flowing out of the node. So here we have 120 amps milliamps leaving the node right in this direction, and then we have it also leaving in this direction as well. So if you sum 120 plus 120 equals 240. So hopefully this is a really good visual representation of KCL. Like I said, we have currents flowing into the node is equal to currents flowing out of the node. And then the other note I made on this circuit is that these two resistors are in parallel. And so this is what it means for resistors to be in parallel. They both share this top node right here, and then they share this bottom node right here as well. And then if you remember earlier on, I mentioned that resistors in parallel have the same voltage drop across them. And so if you measure the voltage drop across right here, you get the full 12 volts, which is what this voltage source is. So that kind of covers the whole left circuit. Okay, so next up is going to be the right circuit. So the right circuit is going to be a demo of 
KVL or Kirchhoff's voltage law. So it says, again, the voltage drop across the loop sums to zero. Directionality is key, and we'll kind of explain again what we mean by directionality. And then the two resistors in this circuit are in series, which means they follow one after the other. So if we're following the direction of current flow, we have to go through one resistor in order to get to the other. So that's a good way to determine whether they're in series. Right, so Kirchhoff's voltage law, again, it states that the voltage drop ac uh, around a closed loop is e equal to zero. So let's just follow the direction of current flow and assume this is, this is positive right here, right? Um, and we're going positive to negative. So if we're going positive to negative and the positive end, the positive terminal of the, the resistor is right here, and the negative terminal is right here, we're going to get a a voltage drop of plus six volts, right? Which is measured right here by this multimeter. And then continuing on to this other resistor, we have the same exact thing, a positive voltage drop of plus six volts. We have six volts, six volts, two positive six volts. Then we bring it all the way around town to this battery, which according to this battery, it's, it's reversed. It's just, it's the same exact thing as this example right here. We have a positive terminal is at the top and the negative terminal is at the bottom. Same exact thing. So this that means we're going negative to positive. So that means we would get a negative 12 volts because the directionality, it's flipped. So I hope that makes good sense. And we'll go even we're going to go over an example problem where we actually have to solve uh, some circuit problems using KCL and KVL. So if it doesn't make sense, then still hold on for those. Um, so yeah, but hopefully this is starting to paint a clearer picture as to what it means for, uh, you know, directionality. I think directionality is probably one of the hardest things to kind of understand with KVL and KCL. Um, but if you got that, then you're, you're golden because it's literally setting things up and setting them equal to zero. So it's a very straightforward and simple after that part. Okay, moving on. Let's take a look at an example now. So we have an example problem here, and our objective is to find the currents and voltages in the circuit shown below. So the currents being I1, I2, I3, and the voltages being V1, V2, and V3 right here. And then we have some other labels in the circuit that we'll go over whenever they become relevant. So here we have a 30 volt voltage source. And then like I said, we have a three ohm resistor, a six ohm resistor and an eight ohm resistor. So the first thing we kind of want to do is use KCL to determine, and this goes back to that example we just talked about is that the, the currents entering the node are going to be equal to the currents leaving the node. So that means we set I1 equal to I2 plus I3, just like in that circuit simulation we just went over, okay? So that should be very straightforward and easy to set up as I1 equals I2 plus I3. Next up, which might be a little bit more tricky, is Kirchhoff's voltage law. And this is for loop one only, right? Because if you remember, Kirchhoff's voltage law said that the voltage drop around a closed loop, not around like the whole circuit, right? So we're taking, and if you have to remember also all the way back to the anatomy lesson we just gave, which is what is a loop? And a loop is just any closed circuit and or any closed like circuit around a, or loop closed loop in a circuit right which is just this thing so this thing is one loop and then this is considered to be an entirely separate loop right here so algebraically the way we set up loop one's equation using kirchhoff's voltage law is that we have or again we're ascribing directionality so positive to negative currents we know currents flowing in the direction of this loop right because it goes from positive all the way to negative so if the voltage drop is goes from plus to minus, we're describing that as a positive, okay? So that means we have V1 is going to be positive, so we have a plus of U1. We have a plus V2 because we're going plus to minus. And then look that, oh, we get all the way to our 30 volt uh, voltage source, and we're getting a negative 30 volts, right? Because it's going from oh, minus to plus, right? So it's going from negative to positive, uh, following the directionality of this loop, Okay. So this is what the KVL for loop one will look like because we have negative 30 volts plus V1 plus V2 equals zero. And I have even an extra note that uh, where is V3, right? V3 is not in loop one, so we omit it, right? So that's a good important note as well as like, we're only worried about loop one right now. The next thing we want to do is rewrite the I um 
we want to rewrite KVL, like V1 and V2, as um, we want to rewrite them using Ohm's law, right? So we have V1 can be rewritten as 8I1. Remember, V equals IR. And with the 8 it comes from I1 times, which is the current through V1, times the resistance of the resistor that the V1 occurs across, right? So we have 8I1 right here. And then V2 can be rewritten using the, the same exact process. So we know that V equals IR, so I is I2, and then the voltage drop across, the V2 voltage drop occurs across a 3 ohm resistor, so we have V2 equals 3, I2 equals 0. Why is the 30 negative? So this goes back to KVO. Remember that voltage is plus to minus to show directionality. Through the resistors, we go plus to minus. Through the voltage source, we go minus to plus. So just know that the voltage source, we're heading in the opposite direction as the resistor. So they just have to be opposite signs of each other. Okay. So now we can kind of rewrite, we want to solve for I1 here, right? So just this is basically, we took this equation right here and then rearranged the variables to solve for I1. So we get 30 minus 3I2 over 8 is equal to I1. Okay, so then we're going to leave this term here and we're going to utilize it later. Okay, so now we have, this is, we're going to do Kirchhoff's voltage law for loop 2. So going back up here, we're talking about loop 2 now. So Kirchhoff's voltage law again states that the voltage drop across a closed loop is equal to zero. So we have negative V2 plus V3 equals zero. And just to be extra clear on how we're getting a negative V2 and a plus V3, again, follow the loop. We get plus to minus. That's a positive term. We're going around this loop, following it around. We're going minus to plus. That's a negative term, okay? Which means like the direction, according to directionality rules, the, turn, the signs of V2 and V3 need to be opposites, right? So we have negative V2 and plus V3 equals zero. So we know that V2 equals V3. So now we have, we're going to rewrite these using Ohm's law again. So we're going to do the same exact thing we just did earlier, which is now we have a six ohm resistor right here and we have a three ohm resistor right here. So the voltage drop of V3 occurs across a six ohm resistor. And so V3 is going to be equal to I3 times the resistance that it's occurring across, which is 6 ohms. So 6 I3 is going to be equal to 3 I2. And we use the same exact process in order to figure out what the term for V2 is. So V2 equals 3 ohms times I2, right? Ohm's law. Okay, so now we have 6I3 equals I2, and then we're going to rearrange these variables just to know that I3 equals I2 over 2. Okay, so now that we have everything rewritten in terms of I2, and this equation right here we got from the original KCL equation. You just took the I2 and the I3 values and moved them over. And so we know that I1, which is this term, minus I2 minus I3, Again, these are just different ways of rewriting I1 and I2 is equal to zero. And then it's just as simple as solving for the equation, right? So we know that I2 is equal to two amps. And like I said, we just solved the algebra after we did this. So like I said, the majority of this problem is just setting it up. And then the algebra is incredibly simple. So like I said, we have I2 equals two amps. I1 equals three amps. I3 equals one amp. Then by using Ohm's law, we can solve, so V equals IR, so we have V2 equals 6 volts, V1 equals 24 volts, and then V3 equals 6 volts. And that's pretty much, that's kind of, it's a really good example of how you can use like Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and Kirchhoff's current laws to break down an entire circuit and understand what's going through each and every element and kind of what's going on in each node and each loop like that. So hopefully that made a lot of sense. If it doesn't, go ahead and drop a comment down below. Any specific questions, I will do more than, I'm more than happy to do multiple examples on this. Um, so just let me know. Okay, so continuing on, just have a couple notes um, to wrap things up on series resistors and voltage division. So the total resistance, this is important to note for series resistors, the total resistance of resistors in series is the sum of their individual resistances. So you can treat them 
like one big resistor. And let me see if we can even go like here. So the what we're talking about here is that if you just took these two 100 ohm resistors and just sum them and replace them with a 200 ohm resistor, like let's say we did that, right? So instead of two 100s, you had one 200, right? You would get the same thing. You have the same amount of, you'd have the same current, you'd have the same everything, right? These are these two circuits that we just drew are equivalent. Okay. That's what that means. So R total equals R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on. The current through all of these resistors is the same. So I equals V over R total. Pretty self-explanatory, right? The source voltage is divided among the resistors in direct proportion to their resistance. And so this is a really good segue into something that is very, very um, ubiquitous in industry, which is a circuit we design as electrical engineers a lot called a voltage divider. This is a circuit that takes advantage of the concept of, this, of, of series resistors in order to step down voltage, right? So here is a good example, good schematic for a voltage divider. So you have your Vn, you have your R1 and R2, and then you have your Vout is in the middle of these two resistors. And this bottom one is connected to ground, right? So the equation for figuring out what Vout would be is going to be Vn equals R2 over R1 plus R2. So if you did like Kirchhoff's current laws and Kirchhoff's voltage laws on the circuit, you would come out with the equation that the voltage in between these two resistors is always going to be equal to this equation right here. I even have an example circuit that I want to demo to, to better illustrate this point. So here I have that exact circuit that we just saw me draw a picture of. And so just for reference, this voltage is 12 volts right here. And then this resistor is a 1K resistor, and this resistor is a 4K resistor. So going back to that equation, we know that V out should be equal to Vn times R2 over R1 plus R2. And here we have R2 and R1 labeled right here. So if we do that, we have 9.6 volts equals 12 volts times 4 kilo ohms divided by one kilo ohm plus four kilo ohms. And what do you know? We get 9.6 volts in the middle right here. Okay, so this is a very common circuit that you'll, you'll use a ton if you become an electrical engineer. So I would say learn this, know it, like the back of your hand, very important, very useful. Next up, I wanna talk about parallel resistors. So parallel resistors are very different from, um, or at least solving for the total resistance is very different than using it in series. And the long and short of it is without showing you the long derivation or anything like that, because you don't need to know how to do that if you're actually an electrical engineer. Just know the equation is this, one over R total equals one over R1 plus one over R2 and so on, right? So you have to do a little bit of complicated algebra in order to actually solve for R total, but just know this is the equation. It's very easy to remember. And I think you're probably smart enough to figure out how to, to solve this equation if you set it up. And so let's just look at a really quick example um, before we close things out here, which is, um, so we have this circuit right here. We want to find the equivalent resistance or the total resistance that is shown or uh, experienced um, when you have these two resistors in parallel. Okay. So we have a 12 volt voltage source. We have R1 and R2. So R1 is equal to 10K, R2 is equal to 3K. And so the equation we just gave is that and this is R equivalent or R total is equal to 1 over 10k plus 1 over 3k. So if you plug all these in, you do the algebra, you get R equivalent equals 2307.69 ohms. And the voltage drop across both of these resistors, so now we're trying to solve the current through each resistor. So if we know the voltage drop across both of the resistors is the same, aka 12 volts, we know that we can individually do Ohm's law on each of them in order to find them out current through them. So I1 is equal to V over R1. I2 is equal to V over R2. And we only have V because it's the same V, aka the same 12 volts. Okay, so that means that I1 is equal to 1.2 milliamps and then I2 is equal to 4 milliamps. So that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to talk about um, in terms of like Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and current laws. Hopefully you got a lot out of that and you can go on and use it to do some analysis of circuits. 
later on. If you have any questions about the stuff I covered today, then feel free to drop a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. Um, so thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.